Hey guys, your boy Nick. I'm an angel, guys. If you guys can hear me. You made it, Chuck. You kind of, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not Chuck Graham. I mean, that is one of the best flyers in these whole United States of America. His name is Ken Peach. Let's give him a big round of applause and make noise because he can hear you. Represented by the Jelly Belly Candy Company of Fairfield, California, Kent Peach will be back a little bit later on to do two very impressive additional performances. One, he's going to try to land on Chuck. Number two, he's going to go up to 6,000 feet, shut the motor off, and turn it into a glider and do a full aerobatic display. One of the best guys, the best stick and water guys in the country, having won both the Bill Barber Award for Air Show Showmanship and the Air Show Memorial Showmanship Award. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look to your left as uh, we get ready for the next act. But we saw the airplane take off. It was responsible for bringing the wings of blue to altitude so they could jump in and put on their tremendous display here. This is the C-47. About 11,000 of these were built. They came from the Douglas DC-3, and it was, as Dwight D. Eisenhower said, along with the bazooka, the jeep, and the atomic bomb, the, one of the four most important weapons of all of World War II, even though it didn't carry a gun. C-49. It was also called the Dakota and the Skytrain and uh, C-47 or C-49 or C, I'm trying to remember the other designation, but there were other designations depending on how it was configured. They're going to bring it into land, but it was an airplane like that and many, many others like it that were responsible for bringing in American paratroopers, towing gliders, bringing in equipment uh, during the June 6th, 1944, amphibious and airborne assault of Normandy, France, that was held at that point by the Germans. This is the issue, guys, the issue. There were literally thousands of paratroopers who, uh, about 17, 17 and 20 paratroopers, I think, in each of these aircraft that were uh, dumped and jumped and uh, used static line jumps. In other words, they jumped out and the parachutes were automatically deployed only several hundred feet above the ground to minimize their time in the air so that they could get on the ground and push the Germans back in France and turn the tide of the war. That was the uh, D-Day invasion, June 6, 1944. And one of the uh, identifying features of these aircraft of all, uh, all of the Allied aircraft that participated in that attack was they had stripes painted on them that they called invasion stripes, black and white stripes that was uh, an effort to identify Allied planes versus German planes so our guys on the ground wouldn't shoot down our own airplanes. And so last minute was the decision to do that, that visual identification friend and foe, or IFF, that sometimes they didn't take a lot of time to make the lines to it. They just slathered white and black paint on the wings and fuselage so they could be identified. So we'll see that airplane coming and land here. The radial piston engine, in case you're not familiar with it, uh, was the type
type of engine that was used on a, a majority of the aircraft that were built in World War II, rather than having a straight four or a V6 or a V8 engine, it had its cylinders arranged in a circle around the central propeller shaft, and the piston's power strokes went directly to the, uh, the drive shaft or the crankshaft that turned the propeller. There are other aircraft from that era that did have uh, V-12 liquid cool engines, and uh, those were built, built by Allison and also Rolls-Royce and also by the Packard Motor Car Company. We'll talk about that in a little bit when we see the red-tailed Mustang coming up. But on the way in, over 11,000 built, about 1,100 still remain. And it was an interesting situation that the lead aircraft a DC-3, I a C-47 called That's All Brother that led the, all of the aircraft in the D-Day airborne invasion of Normandy on June 6th, 1944, was in Wisconsin about to be transformed with different engines and turned into a free hauler uh, to be working in the current airspace system. And somebody found the data plate on it and looked at it and found out how important that airplane was as a historical monument uh, to what happened on June 6th, 1944. And the, uh, that aircraft has been restored and was flown over along with five other C-47s from the United States to Normandy uh, for the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion, commemorating that, uh, that incredible day when the Germans were beginning to, begin to be pushed back in, in France. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice round of applause for Wildcat, Brad O'Connor, Kevin O'Connor, and Brad Prater as it clears the runway. The C-47 
the C5 Galaxy from 1968. The largest aircraft in the United States military. In its original configuration, came in at a max gross weight of 858,000 pounds. It has been re-engined in the last few years and the C5M Galaxy now, with its new engines, can weigh in at a maximum gross weight of over a million pounds. But the C-17 Globemaster III, following in the dynasty of the Douglas aircraft from 1942 with the C-54, and the C-74 Globemaster I, that came into, uh, was going to go into service at the end of World War II, but orders were canceled. Then the C-124 Globemaster III, a uh, Globemaster II, if you will, that was an aircraft that had four piston engines, each of which generated 3,500 horsepower. But the C-17 Globemaster III combines the short field takeoff and landing capabilities of the C-130 and the heavy lift capabilities of the C-5 Galaxy. It has a top speed of over 515 miles per hour. And as it approaches from the right, we're gonna see a high speed pass at about 350 miles per hour. If you have ever been in a Boeing 757 airliner, you have been held aloft with the power of the civilian version of the engines that are on this aircraft right now. A what? The, the F-117 engine from Pratt & Whitney. So, Dave so Moncrief, Devin, the list phones, to, uh, to service the Camille and Glenn Allison, the South Georgia guy, the Fed. ...jacks that are built into the landing gear. From 515 miles per hour top speed, or we saw about 350 miles per hour, approaching from the left, the C-17 Globemaster III is now approaching at about 150 miles per hour. What you will see here is an aircraft that is aerodynamically dirty. The leading edge slats on the wings are curved down. The trailing edge flaps are extended, changing the shape of the wing to create more lift at low speeds. The landing gear is down. Some 220 of these aircraft are in use by the United States Air Force. About another 50 are used by other air arms around the world. The slow speed pass. Today's demonstration was flown by pilots Major Jonathan Crawley, Major Travis Rich, and another safety pilot, Major Emily Barkemeyer. The loadmaster is Master Sergeant Mitchell Thompson. Among the four, they have accrued over 12,000 hours of flight time in various United States Air Force aircraft. Now as they get past, the throttles will come forward. The landing gear will come up.
the C-17. Bye guys, bye guys, bye guys, bye guys.